right. Welcome back to Open. It has been a month since President Trump has been in office, and it's been a controversial time, to say the least. His attorney general selection, Jeff Sessions, has been approved, and he's now brought on a national security advisor, a new one, uh, joining us for an in-depth conversation on President Trump's administration. Please welcome Associate Professor at Borough Manhattan Community College, J.C. Polanco. Nice to have you again. Thank you for having me. And uh, also media and political analyst Lee Bynes. Nice to have you, sir. Good to be back. Uh, J.C., let's start <laughs> with you. Um, Great. Every day brings new surprises, I think, out of uh, uh, the Trump presidency. Yeah. Um, from your um, often right-leaning perspective, uh, evaluate what this first month has been like. It's been a little chaotic, a uh, little. To, say the le to say the <laughs> least. Uh, I think you have a president that so badly wanted to demonstrate that he was going to fulfill his promises from his 18-month campaign, that he wanted to rush so many of those uh, talking points through in the form of executive orders that some of them, like the immigration ban, weren't well thought through. Uh, and then you have some, uh, some others, like uh, not only the travel ban, but the immigration ban, that were a little off. So I think that when you see his combative nature that you saw during the campaign now, you see it in the presidency. When you see how he uses Twitter the same way now that he did during the campaign, it kind of throws you off. You don't really expect that. So it's been chaotic, but his supporters are very happy. His supporters are happy because he's actually coming through. He's coming through with the oil pipelines. He's coming through with the immigration ban that he promised. He's coming through with the travel ban from the Middle East like he promised. He's coming through with all sorts of things, including beginning the process of building a wall with Mexico. So if you're a Trump supporter, you're happy today. But if you were on the fence or you voted for Hillary, you're pulling your hair out as of this morning. I'll ask you one more and then we'll let uh, uh, Lee Bynes weigh in on uh, what, what you just heard. Mm -hmm. Is he really coming through with everything? He talked about uh, overhauling Obamacare. That's a dream. The Republicans haven't figured out what to do with that. They don't, it, it was right. a lie to begin with that he was going to be able to do it. And, and then he came out and lied to the public and told the public that uh, everybody's going to get coverage. It's going to be less coverage. And that's not going to happen. He also told them he was going to get that wall at Mex uh, that Mexico, who's going to pay for the wall <laughs> yeah, in Mexico? Gary. And that's, of course, a big lie Gary, because they're never going to pay Gary, for it. Gary, listen, the executive order is clear. The Americans are going to put up the money for the wall first, and then he's planning on getting reimbursed through taxing remittances. That's one. And two, he said yesterday that by the second week of March, we are going to see the first phase of this so-called so replacement of Obamacare. So when you ask me, is he coming through, to his supporters, they're happy because they're seeing some action by, by the president. The first phase, uh, I'm sorry, I have to answer, ask this question. The first phase of uh, replacement of Obamacare, at a debate, Hillary said, let's keep the parts of Obamacare that are good, like the 26-year-old uh, uh, permission for uh, uh, covering uh, pre dependents pre and, and pre-existing conditions. And Trump said, no, the whole thing is a disaster. <laughs> well, he was lying to the public, right? Well, listen, I don't know if he was lying or not. Don't put me on the spot like that, Gary. I don't, can't get into the heart and mind of Donald All right. Trump. All I know is that I'm he changed his out. mind. I'll, he changed his, he changed mind. his mind. Go ahead, uh, okay. Mr. Bynes. Well, the last part of this conversation, I'm going to be really generous here and say that maybe the, the president, uh, or for those who call him the president, uh, I'm going to be generous. Perhaps he was just speaking out of sheer ignorance because basically speaking, uh, anybody who knows anything about economics, the free market system, Capitalism, the way it works, it is absolutely 100% impossible to, put, to uh, ensure all Americans affordably and to offer them a rich uh, complement of ben benefits. It just cannot happen, and I'll stand on that. Um, where where uh, most industrialized nations have been able to provide health care for all of their citizens, that was done through a carve-out. They carved the uh, health care, their carved... The, systems out of the economic process. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's set up on a socialist type of prospect now. They still capitalist countries, but those particular items, education, health care, the social safety net, are all carve-outs out of that, and everything else is capitalist. What the United States is trying to do and has been doing is, is uh, allowing the free park market system to rear its ugly head, and there's no way that you're going to cap prices in the free market system to make it affordable for everybody. It's you just not going to happen. You said something right up at the top that gets to the, the core of the problems in this country. Mm -hmm. You said some people don't think he is the president. Well, you know what? He is the president of the United States, mm -hmm. and so they could say he's not my president, but then you're feeding into the kind of uh, uh, disruption and uh, uh, fragmentation of our society that pits people together because people have said that about President Obama. They said he's not my president. Absolutely. And that was, Absolutely. that was as invalid as saying is Donald Trump is not my president. Um, here's the situation. 
we're in such a polarized environment based upon how this whole, the, the Republicans rolled out their opposition to uh, Barack Obama. Day one, from day one, they indicated that they were not going to cooperate at any level whatsoever. They, their, their, their goal was to make him a one-term president. Now that President Trump, if I'm going to be that generous, is in that same seat. Well, he is the president. People, I mean, people no on the, the opposition are saying, but why should we give I got new, any more new, of an inch, new, you know, any more That's of an inch? Job. We have to make sure these, these guys are one-termers, just like the Democrats are looking at Trump, saying you have about three years and a few months to go. If that That's much. what Democrats <clears throat> and Republicans do. We get ready to take each other out in the next turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, one um, area where maybe you agree, because he's been widely um, kind of complimented uh, for his pick of H.R. Uh, McMaster, as a national um, security advisor, uh, what do you think? Uh, I mean, although he wasn't his first choice, clearly he was maybe third, fourth, or fifth choice. Um, what, what do you think about this? Selection? Well, you know, everything I've been reading about the Lieutenant General is fantastic. This guy's uh, intellectual. Something that's been missing from uh, from the White House for a little bit. Uh, this is someone who has a history of speaking his mind, and someone. I think that what what we need is someone who's not a yes man. And from every, every aspect of his background, demonstrates that he's the kind of lieutenant general and national security advisor to tell the president, no, you're wrong. I think we should do it uh, in a different way. Because that White House, as of today, is filled with yes men. And that's the most dangerous thing we can have in the White House. Is this a choice uh, you like? I mean, he's a military guy and, and somebody who apparently <coughs> knows military strategy. And frankly, there's a lot of complications out there. And rather than painting things with a broad paintbrush, it might be nice to have somebody. Uh, yeah, he's uh, currently active duty. Um, whether or not, uh, I mean, tremendous accolades towards this man. I couldn't find anything to disagree with him about. However, if Donald Trump is unwilling to listen to the advice that he's given, it's going to be a difficult time for McMaster's. If Donald Trump is still wedded as closely as he is to uh, Steve Bannon, and Steve Bannon has his ear, it's going to be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. With regards to the first 80, uh, 30 days of this administration, uh, chaotic, tumultuous, but the biggest word is fear. I think everybody, uh, most people in this country are fearful. You have uh, anti, uh, anti uh, uh, semitism going on right now. You have uh, women uh, are, are afraid what's, uh, about what's going on right now. We have immigrants afraid of what's going on right now. We have all of Europe afraid of what's going on right now. Trump sent a compliment of his, uh, his cabinet to uh, Europe in Munich, Brussels, to kind of like smooth things over. But uh, the Europeans aren't buying it. Uh, do you think that fear is, has been the kind of the, he's created this, uh, this uh, platform of fear? He's scared everybody. I mean, you walked in here today, you probably weren't scared that you were going to be terrorized. And we certainly haven't had a, a major terror attack in this country, thank goodness, for many years. And yep. yet the, the feedback, the, the feeling you get from the White House is, Everybody should be afraid. If, if we didn't start this immigration ban right now, they were going to come fly. Terrorists were going to come flying in. That is a pretty well, strong you know, uh, thing to yeah, put on America. Gary, 62 and a half million people agreed with that message and voted for Donald Trump. And another thing we have to understand. A minority of the, uh, of the, no, well, of the voters. No, but the majority of the Electoral College, which is what matters. Right. And, but this is the important thing. The important thing is that, you know, the FBI Director Comey told us last year that there was no way that we can actually vet all of the refugees coming from Syria. This just is not a foolproof measure of being able to do it. So we were under the idea and under the impression that because of that, we, were, we could have people from ISIS and terrorists coming in with, through the refugee crisis and everything that we were doing to allow people to come in without thorough background checks. I think Donald Trump took advantage of that to remind voters that something bad could happen, especially when the FBI director says, we don't even know who these people are. And he won on that message. So I'm not scared when I come into the studio that something is going to happen, but I know that there are a lot of immigrants that are scared this morning of deportation and and that's a big deal now when I go to when I go throughout the city and I speak to to immigrants they're saying oh President Trump is coming after us uh, this new immigration ban am I going to get deported that's a big question that you get right now and I want to remind them that under the eight years those 96 months of President Obama every month of his leadership you saw over 26,000 people get deported now that's over two and a half million that's more than any other so, president and I didn't remember people being so, so scared well then that was that is the fundamental question can this be done without spreading the kind of fear that was uh, that is being spread right no, now cause, that cause, was you know I, I'd like to speak to that because sure, the, 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 the policy policies that President Obama was operating under was specifically to detail and target 
certain types of individuals, people who had committed major crimes. This new, almost called as it a recent round as, up, this re as recent as yesterday was just released, is that any crime, no matter how small, you could be subject to deportation. Now, the memo is clear. Listen, General Kelly, Secretary Kelly's memo is clear. Anyone in the United States that's here undocumented is up for deportation. That's always been the law. That's not, that hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed now is that now we are looking for, for criminals first and then everyone else second. And that's something that people haven't heard before. Is but there, that hasn't really changed. Is there a cost to society if you take, for example, the, that case that was highly publicized, you have a mother of three or four children, even if she's here, quote unquote, illegally or in an undocumented fashion, and you take her out, don't you then create an immense problem, an immense social problem of that course. will cost us more can in the I, long can run. Can I speak to that? Uh, uh, let him okay, answer yeah. and then you, of course, this and is then a, we're going to watch the time and see is, how much we got. Of course, this is a humanitarian crisis, but one thing you didn't mention about that woman is that she had falsified government records, and she violated the law. It wasn't like she was picking daisies and the ice came in and took her but out. But again, what but is the cost like, to society? I know, it's a humanitarian. The first things are going to be more expensive. First, we're looking at 11 million people that are up for deportation. It's going to cost us a great deal, and the humanitarian factor, these are families that we're tearing apart. And I it's, and I know it's I, tough, I want to give but we are a country of laws, Gary. we got to okay. figure out a balance. You know what, it's difficult to, to argue against the fact that these people came in illegally. And uh, as much as I would love to fight that fight for them, that's a difficult fight. However, the, the only argument that people on the left have to support them is the humanitarian argument, compassion. There's not a lot of that left in the United States. Uh, Although today. it is on the base of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, let's get to one, one other item, and uh, that is this whole idea about fake news. Is, is what we're doing here fake news? No, not at all. You never do fake news. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> no, Bronx no, no. <laughs> Infowars is fake news, uh -huh. not Bronx uh, if, if the pre If the president, uh, you know, as we know, he tweeted out, uh, you know, that ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, they were all uh, progenitors of uh, fake news. Um, if he is lying about so many things, which he does, isn't he the, the biggest spreader of fake news? It's, it's, a, strategy. it's, you say it's, it's a, a strategy. You say it's a strategy to undermine information that is, uh, uh, contradicts anything that he or his, or, or his administration says. If he mm. can get away with that, and the media does not have a perfect reputation in this area, if oh, the media no. was doing its job, <laughs> if the media were doing its job at the onset, President uh, uh, Trump would not be president. Uh, what, what do you think about, uh, we'll give you the final word here and then we got to run. I disagree with the president. I wouldn't make those tweets. I think it sends the wrong message and uh, it takes the confidence that New Yorkers and, and Bronxites have from getting their news from you, Gary, and I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't. I think, I think it's a terrible thing because New Yorkers and Bronxites out there depend on you to get the information as to what's happening in their government. It's, and and, and I'm going to add my own editorial point. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't really do news. I do opinion and talk. Mm -hmm. To me, you put it out there and let people make up their own minds. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very complicated issue. But, but you try and stay as close to the facts as possible. Lee Bynes, thank you. J.C. Polanco, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. And uh, let's see, we'll be, they, they're telling me to say that we'll be right back after these messages, and we will.